Welcome to worship this glorious day that the Lord has made. My name is Julie Schmidt, and I am here on behalf of St. Mary's uh, Congregation Council. We would love to welcome Pastor Kathy Brown here in our midst, and we want to thank you for accepting our call to interim ministry. We look forward to worshiping with you and serving with you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> So again, welcome to worship. Um, next Sunday, or if you, if you end up not coming on Saturday night, or when you leave here on Saturday night, please remember to set your clocks ahead, or you might be a little off come Sunday. So please remember that. Um, there is an announcement sheet for the details of upcoming events. Please take note of that. One of those events is we will be having uh, midweek Lenten services at 6.30 each Wednesday. It is a series by Steve Moline, um, who's a pastor, an ELCA pastor, and it's called The Journey of Stones. And so we've already put some stones at the foot of the cross, but each week there will be a different theme um, around those stones. So please join us for that. And now I have to say mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, because in the office this week, as you can imagine, trying to onboard a, a new pastor, an interim pastor, and not everything is necessarily without its bumps. Because Wednesday night service that we were working on very diligently when I got here on Monday and finished up on Tuesday is very different than the weekend uh, worship. So some things, kind of, page numbers kind of got missed and, and that, so I will direct you to those. Some items got missed, so I will direct you to those. Um, we're singing the whole liturgy. We're doing the whole liturgy of setting four. Um, so some things aren't in there. Be patient. Be kind. Uh, we, will, we will get things cleaned up as we work together. So just note that. The two things that you can make note of right now is um, after... Uh, the prelude, we will go into the confession and give forgiveness. And I know that's not printed in your bulletin. So the page number for that, I'll announce it again, but it will be page number 94 in the ELW. And then we will follow that with hymn number 320. And then um, for the canticle of praise, please note that we will be singing the general verse and Lent 1 this week. And then when we get to the Thanksgiving at the table, the part of the communion service, um, I know it says page 154 on there, but there is a responsive portion that will occur on page one that you can find on page 111. I'm really, again, sorry about the confusion, but give us, give us a few weeks and we'll, we'll get it all in order for you or, or make some decisions about what that's going to look like. So thank you for your grace. Now let us turn our hearts toward worship.
I invite you to stand as you are able to do so. Again, our order for service, confession, and forgiveness follows on page 94 in your hymnal. We'll be following the right-hand column. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit that, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together by Christ. Or with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with, the, with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And we sing our opening hymn, number 320. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort.
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord. Oh, I got the wrong one, sorry. Sorry. In the hymnal. Mm -hmm. Sorry. General on that one. That one verse. From the dawning of creation, you have loved us as your own. Stay with us through all temptation. Make us turn to you alone. Make us turn to you alone. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that, following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Deuteronomy. When you've come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first fruit, first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A, wa a wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans. The word is near you, 
on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls in the name, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command the stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given, to, given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So as our Gospel begins, Jesus has just been baptized and has returned from the River Jordan, and he is full of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that led him in the wilderness. He would need the fullness of that Spirit to get through those 40 days, not only because he was in the wilderness, but he was also being tempted, tempted by the devil. Now, the wilderness is a place of danger, of thieves, of bandits, even bandits such as the devil. We'll get to more of that later. Jesus being led by the Spirit in the wilderness harkens back to Israel's journey in the wilderness. Not of 40 days, but of 40 years in the wilderness, where God led them by as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Interestingly, as we hear the temptations of Jesus, they too are reminders similar of uh, reminders of those challenges of the people who were on that journey in the wilderness. The manna or bread that God provided when Jesus gets tempted to turn stones into bread. Bowing down to the golden calf as Jesus was tempted to bow down to the devil. And the manner in which they complained and tested God. In his temptations, Jesus fully identifies with the people of Israel and with all 
of God's people. Forty, for 40 days, he was tempted. It says, you know, I've not read that necessarily that way before. For 40 days, he was tempted. And yet we only hear of three temptations. So you wonder, did it really take that long for those three temptations? Likely, it was no. He was tempted by many dozens of other temptations that the devil posed. The devil is a wily sort, trying to hit Jesus where he lives. He's like a bandit, trying to steal Jesus' authority that was proclaimed at his baptism. You are my son, the beloved, in you I am well pleased. Jesus, after enduring... Forty grueling days of temptation is famished. And what better way to tempt someone than by offering food as a relief of that hunger? In Jesus' case, the ability to turn stones to bread that would sate his growling belly. The devil then figures out, well, everybody wants power, wealth, and authority. Why not offer that? It's very appealing, right, to have all that stuff, all those possessions. One wonders, however, where the idea that the devil ever had authority about all, over all those kingdoms in the first place, where that power or authority had come from. At any rate, the devil tempts Jesus with it. But there's a caveat, bow down and worship the devil. And finally, the devil says, if or since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from the pinnacle of the temple, and God will send angels to protect you. Wouldn't that be impressive, to do such a feat, to dive off a building and be saved at the last minute? And yet Jesus resists it all. We might say, yeah, well, easy for him. He was the Son of God, after all. But if we do that, it cheapens his humanity. It brings into question whether he really became one of us, something that we profess each time we say the creed. He became incarnate. He took on flesh. He became human. He was human. He was tempted likely dozens of times more than three, just as we are each and every day but resisted. Each time the devil issued a challenge, Jesus didn't, give, didn't uh, give in, but responded with the words of Scripture. In Luke, that's a reflection that Jesus was indeed the fulfillment of the Scriptures. He's there to seal the deal between God and the people. He's there, um, and it's kind of comical that the devil... Um, uses, in his third challenge, uses scripture. Scripture by quoting um, portions of Psalm 91, which is the psalm appointed, appointed for this day. But even that doesn't phase Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit, strengthened and empowered by the Spirit in the middle of the wilderness through a whole bunch of temptation. Aren't we all well acquainted with wilderness and temptations, particularly after the past couple of years that we've endured? Our wildernesses may not have been rocky desert places, but still as ominous or uninviting. When and where have we felt like, and this is your chance to contribute, when and where have we felt like we've been in a wilderness these last few months or years? What? Lots of places, lots of things. Shout them out. Pandemic. Louder. Pandemic, right? Political divides. You kind of, you, you might feel sometimes like you're in a wilderness. Um, that loss of sense of community by not being able to do all the things that we used to do together, that, um, you know, pastoral transition, you might feel like you're in a wilderness, right? When pastors leave and you're waiting for someone to come and the whole idea of going through a process. 
Yeah, the, and certainly, of course, the pandemic separation. So all kinds of wilderness, and maybe, maybe it's not just those events, but the wildernesses that we feel in our hearts, right? Poor in spirit, those kind of wildernesses. Our temptations may not be turning stones into bread or getting authority over all the kingdoms of the world or throwing ourselves off of tall buildings, but they are, there are temptations nonetheless. Temptations that aren't always well-defined or easy to identify, cloaked in shades of gray. By what have we been tempted? Your turn. Well, being shut away, we, I know I'm on, it's called, now called the Healing Network. It was a task force by the Synod for um, opioid and so other substance abuse. Has that not been a temptation well, it, that has gone way up during this time of separation? What about getting on board a gossip wagon? Yeah. What about bearing, and that goes along with bearing false witness to our neighbors? Or the temptation to be angry or resentful or hurt? Or tempted to power, earthly power? Plenty of examples of those power struggles going on in our world these days. If you haven't read the headlines, you know, we pray for Russia and Ukraine. Power struggles for supremacy, whether it's race or gender or politics. Threats to loss of power that often lead us further and further into temptation. And how have we responded? There's a temptation to throw in the towel, right? To just walk away, maybe in ignorance. If I don't hear about it, I don't know about it, I don't see it, I don't have to do anything about it. Or to escape, or again in anger. Or do we respond in prayer and trying to keep community, relying on the Holy Spirit to be with us in the wilderness and as we face temptations? We have 40 days of Lent, not including Sundays, the same number of days that Jesus spent in the wilderness being tempted, the same number of years that God's chosen people spent in the wilderness complaining we can use that time to examine ourselves personally and communally, face our temptations, where we have fallen short, where we need to repent. We can also take that time to recall who and whose we are, God's children, God's created beings, created in God's image, no less. God's beloved who receive grace upon grace. The book of Deuteronomy, which was written about around the 7th century BCE, has been considered Moses' farewell address. It's a kind of sermon or homily that weaves into it the history of God and the people of Israel. In today's text, God instructs the people about gathering the first fruits of the land that they will possess and how they should be presented to God. That presentation involves relating that history and relationship with Yahweh. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor, referring to Abraham. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us, we cried to the Lord, the Lord of our, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you. In Psalm 91, which is appointed for this day, but we didn't read, it's a, the psalm, as I mentioned, that the devil quoted from. And it also reminds us of our relationship with God. 
They will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And God responds, those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And finally, in Romans, Paul says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Old Testament, New Testament, today there's grace upon grace upon grace. Even for those who fall into temptation and need to be rescued. Grace abounds. And we do need to be rescued. After all, the devil doesn't go away, but waits for an opportune time. We ha can't let our guard down then, because that bandit devil keeps trying to challenge, to take our way of our baptismal identity, as he tried to rob Jesus of his identity as son of God, tries to tempt us, even in our faith. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, pray lead us not into temptation. Let's mean it, and then rely on God's spirit, God's power, even and especially in our trials as we face them together. I'd like to share with you a story, and it's from a treasury of Jewish folklore edited by Nathan Ozabel. And this particular tale is called The Secret of Power. The waters were rising until they almost reached the throne of glory. Thereupon the Almighty cried out, Be still, O waters. Then the waters became vainglorious and boasted, We are the mightiest of all creation. Let us flood the earth. And this God grew wrathful and rebuked the waters. Do not boast of your strength, ye vain braggarts. I will send upon you the sands, and they will raise up a barrier against you. When the waters saw the sand, and of what tiny grains it consisted, they began to mock. How can such tiny grains as you stand up against us? Our smallest wave will sweep over you. When the grains of sand heard this, they were frightened. But their leader comforted them. Do not fear, brothers. True enough, we are tiny, and every one of us by himself is insignificant. The wind can carry us to all ends of the earth. But if we all only remain united, then the waters will see what kind of power we have. When the little grains of sand heard these words of comfort, they came flying from all the corners of the earth and lay down one on top of the other and against each other upon the shores of the seas. They rose up in mounds, in hills, and in mountains, and formed a huge barrier against the waters. And when the waters saw how great the army of the grains of sand stood united, they became frightened and retracted. Even if we feel like we are scattered, insignificant grains of sand at some point, if we can resist the temptation to give up or give in and come together as God's people, united in Christ, empowered and led by the Holy Spirit, we can stand up to all the waves that threaten to crash us down. Waves of disunity, disharmony, injustice, oppression, and despair in order to bring hope, grace, and the love of Christ to and for the world in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing number 319, O Lord, throughout these 40 days.
Please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, that in its proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ, your people learn to reject voices of deception and distraction, strengthen all who are tempted to believe lies about themselves or others, merciful God, Receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect wilderness places and all plant and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and all laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to the needs of those whose lives are threatened by war and oppression. Grant them wisdom to find peaceful resolutions that all may know peace. Give them courage to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees, especially those who are fleeing the grips of war. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those in need. Rescue those experiencing mental illness, or contending with addiction. Ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. Command your angels concerning all who are sick, especially Rylan, Dawn, John, Rick, Diana, Kirby, June, Jeff, Ben, Eugene, Marissa, Edie, Bev, Arlen, Robin, Joel, Tara, Diane, Lynn, and Margaret. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this church community. Open our hearts to the stirring of your spirit. Give us wisdom and discernment as we seek to do your will. Grant wisdom, strength, patience, and boldness to Pastor Kathy as she begins her ministry with us. Guide us as we revitalize and reimagine ministry together. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. That's peace. That's peace.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, I instruct you to invite you to turn to page 111 for the order of Thanksgiving of the day, kind of holding your thumb in uh, page 154 where our service will continue. And Laurel, just a note, I know we were going to try to sing the Christ has died, Christ has risen, but since that music is not printed on page 111, we'll just redo that as spoken, okay? All right. So we won't do the amen, we'll just speak the amen as well, too. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed, it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call us to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of bab, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth, Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for the Spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of this bread. Raise up the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With all of your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, 
We praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. You may be seated.
want you to stand as you are able to do so. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, loving all of your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and in prison. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending song number 431, O Christ, what can it mean for us? We are God's people, followers of Jesus Christ, gifted by the Spirit. Go pray, go, go love, go, go serve. serve. Thanks be to God.